In this video, we are going to cover uh, creating the service layer from my database with authorization enabled. If you have watched my previous videos, I showed how to create the service stack from my tables using OData in just a few clicks. Now, uh, the next step is to add authorization to it. And to do that, we are going to take advantage of the few features that Visual Studio 2013 is offering with respect to authentication. Um, it provides a lot of functionality right off the bat if you use the templates, uh, sign in, register, even signing in through third party like Google or Facebook. So I want to use all of that uh, in conjunction with my OData web API layer. So let's get started. I'm going to first create the mapping project file project for my database and um, I'm going to run uh, through the first steps pretty fast. Um, I've covered them in more detail um, in my videos about creating the service stack. You can refer to them at my channel or uh, um, on my website at mytakeon.it. Um, but the focus in this video will be more on the authorization piece. So I'm using this tool here to generate the mapping files from the tables that I've already created. It's trying to look for the list of uh, SQL Server instances. I already have my uh, database created. So I just have to point uh, this tool to that. There you go. So it will give me the list of tables for which um, I want the mapping files to be created. Now I'd be interested in creating them for this item table and the part table which references the item table. Now notice here that you, will, uh, you see a list of other tables as well. These are the ones that Microsoft um, template for authentication it creates uh, these tables in an MDF file if you select the authentication option. Um, I just wanted them all in one database so I just uh, used their, their schema to recreate the same tables uh, in my SQL Server database. So I won't be creating um, any mappings for the authentication tables. Uh, those will be the cost to them um, will be handled by the class files that are generated automatically but right now I have the mappings already created for my two tables item and part next I'm going to create my web API layer so select web ASP.NET web application and I select web API but this is the important piece um, in the authentication change authentication option I hit that button and I select individual user accounts so that will um, give all the functionality that is needed for auth authentication I hit OK Now once this is created, I already will have a web API layer ready with authentication in place. Uh, all we have to do is um, the additional work for creating the OData services and also using the authorization piece for my OData controllers. So I'll just start with uh, referencing my class library project here setting this as the startup project and then I need to install the package which will help me uh, 
create the audit uh, layer pretty fast. That's done. Just a few more steps uh, before my audit uh, layer is ready. I'll copy over my connection string from the class library project to my web.config project. And um, as I mentioned earlier, I was planning to use the same database for the authentication as well. So even though the authentication um, service layer is already defined, I'm just going to change the table that it is going to point to. Sorry, the database that it's going to point to. I'll remove the reference of the MDO file here. And uh, the database uh, name as well. So that's done. Next step is adding the route entries for my core data controllers. tables that I'm interested in exposing the items table using the items controller and let's make an entry for the part table as well and create the route entry to create the using statement so that's all the groundwork that was needed now next step is creating my base O data controller which will have authorization enabled previously I had uh, created a controller uh, which uh, derives some entity set controller so that we can use its uh, already defined methods uh, this time we are going to create a controller that derives from that entity set controller and we'll call that authorized entity set controller So that's the derived class definition and really all we need to do is um, add the authorized attribute at the top and this will just make sure that um, all calls to methods within the controller we only allow them if the user is logged in and authenticated this is all we need to do the only caveat here is uh, make sure that we use the authorized attribute uh, in system.web.http and not MVC. Um, this is a mistake that I made the first time and uh, it took me a while to figure this one out. Um, the system.web.http authorizes the attribute you want to add to your OData controller. Great, um, I'm going to create a, a controller now to test this authorization. It would be my items controller.
just defining the method uh, the get method I'll be overriding the base uh, get method here and let's define the database context and we are also going to in initialize it here usually you would want to in initialize the database context using uh, unity or some other inversion of control mechanism but this is just a quick uh, for the purpose of this demo this is uh, enough for us I think that's all the steps that are needed to create uh, the OData controller with authorization enabled. So next step is uh, we're going to test them, test it. I just started it in debug mode. taking a while to load but once it's done we are going to test if OData is working and if we are able to call the method at first we are gonna call so this is OData OData is working that's great let's try to call the items controller and uh, what we were hoping for we get a 401 uh, authorization has been denied message which, which is great now the next step is to really uh, authorize the user and see if the call goes through um, since I don't have a website in place to call this web API layer we are going to use our good friend uh, Fiddler now I, I have this ready already to first make a call to the API to get the token um, I'm gonna pass in the username and the password um, I've already created these entries in the table so once I pass in this it will return back uh, a token which I can use for subsequent requests so that those requests are authorized requests So there you go, I got the token back. So I'm gonna copy this token and use this for my next call. Take this out. And now it's going to be a get call to get the items. There you go, it's returning me the two entries that I made in the item table uh, right at the bottom. If I mess with the token a little bit, I get the 401, which is awesome, which is what we really needed. So we have sh um, in this video, I've shown you how you could uh, integrate uh, the authentication pieces that Microsoft provides um, and just use it in conjunction to uh, create uh, an, a web API layer with OData uh, pretty fast and um, just reuse uh, existing functionality without reinventing the wheel so much.